What's going on guys, John Elder here from Codemy.com and in this video, we're gonna build a simple blog with Django and Python. All right guys, like I said, in this video, we're gonna to start to build a blog with Django. But before we get started, if you like this video, and wanna see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codeb.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. That's all my courses, videos, and books for a one-time fee at just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, a lot of you have been asking me to do this for a while, create a basic blog with Django. So I thought, Hey, let's do it. So <laughs> that's what we're going to work on in this next series here of, I don't know, five or six to 10 ish videos. So uh, building a blog with Django is pretty straightforward. You know, in a lot of my other videos, we've done a little bit of database stuff here and there. I've got whole courses on Django database stuff, a to do list app, a stock market app, all kinds of stuff you can check out at, uh, you know, codemy.com. Uh, but for this, a little uh, series, this playlist here on YouTube, I figured we'd just do a little basic blog. And it's gonna allow us to learn some cool database stuff, but not too complicated. And uh, some class views, but again, not too complicated, and things like that. So, all right, let's just go ahead and get started. I'm not gonna go through installing Python and the Sublime Text Editor that I'm gonna use or the Git Bash Terminal. If you don't know how to install those, check my YouTube channel, I've got just tons of videos showing how to install those, but they're real strip, uh, simple and straightforward. You should be able to figure it out. All right, I'm on a Windows computer. If you're on Mac or Linux, you should be able to follow along. A couple of the commands may be a little bit different. If you have trouble, just leave a message in the comments below and I'll try and help you out. Or you could just Google it and find the answer in like 20 seconds. So, all right, here we go. So let's pull up our Git Bash terminal. And first we need to create a directory in order to you know have our project sitting in it. So let's go MK DIR. And when I want to put it in my C drive. And what should we call this? Uh, let's just call this simple blog. And we want to change directories into that directory. So let's go simple blog. All right, so ls, there's nothing in there. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is create a virtual environment. We always do that when we create a Django project. So let's go Python dash M V E N V for virtual environment. And let's call our virtual environment vert. So hit enter, it takes usually a couple of seconds to spin this thing up and boom, boom, done. All right, so now we want to turn on our virtual environment. So source, uh, vert, scripts, activate, and boom, you notice we have this vert thing. If you're on Mac or Linux, I think the command is source bin activate. I think that should do it for you on Mac or Linux, but if, on, if you're on Windows, it's source vert scripts activate. Okay, so our virtual environment is turned on. So let's go ahead and pip install Django. And I'm just gonna use the latest version. It really doesn't matter. I'm also just using the latest version of Python. It doesn't matter at all. Whatever the latest versions of these things are at the time, you can go ahead and use those. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and clear the screen. So, all right, let's create our actual Django project. So it is django-admin.py and start project. And what do we want to call this thing? Let's call it, I don't know, a blog, right? Very creative name, a blog. <laughs> so now if we LS, we can see we've got this a blog directory. So we can CD into a blog. Oops, clear the screen. And you'll see here's our manage.py file so we know we're in the right spot. So first thing I always want to do is Python manage.py migrate the server. And we can now Python manage.py run server just to make sure, oops, oh, I misspelled manage. So that's Python manage.py run server to make sure that everything was installed correctly. And we could pull up a web browser and we could just go to localhost colon 8000. If we see this screen, Yahoo, the whole thing has been installed correctly. All right, so we're actually gonna use the admin area a little bit, at least at the beginning of this course. Um, to create our blog post. Later on, we'll create actual web pages where we can make blog post entries. But at the beginning, we want to do it all in the admin area. So we need to set up the admin area. So let's head back to the terminal, control C to break out of here. I'm just going to clear this screen. And we need to create a super user. So win PTY, and then it's uh, python manage.py create super 
user. And I just have to do the WinPTY thing because I'm on Git Bash using the Git Bash terminal. If you're on Mac or Linux, you don't have to type in WinPTY. You would just type in Python manage.py, create super user. So let's create a super user and I'm gonna call it admin and uh, put my email address just for the fun of it and create a password and type it again. Okay, so now we can, well, let's go Python manage dot pi run server to run the server again and make sure the admin area uh, is working. So let's go to localhost colon 8000 forward slash admin. And here's our admin login. We type in that pass or that username we just created and that password and we see, okay, here's our users. And now I'm gonna click on admin and I'm gonna actually put in my name. So John Elder, because later on when we create blog posts, we wanna put our actual name. You could put the username and we'll do that, but we also wanna put like by John Elder. So we wanna put our username or actual name in the admin area. So come down here and click save. Okay, so that looks good. Now we can go back to the home page. All right, so moving right along, let's control C to break out of here. Now we need to actually create our, our app within our project. So we want Python manage.py start app. Now, what do we want to name this thing? Uh, we named our project a blog. <laughs> so um, let's just call this my blog. I don't know. I'm bad at naming things or the blog. <laughs> All right, whatever. So now we can go to our sublime text and let's go to project and add folder to project. And what you want to do is navigate to your C drive and you want to find that simple blog directory that we created at the beginning. And we want to be in a blog. And then if you see a blog and the blog, just click select folder. And here's our stuff. If we go to a blog, which is the main app or the main project, and then settings.py, we need to add to our installed apps, the blog. And again, this is a terrible name. <laughs> I'm bad at naming things. So add that in there and save it. Okay, now we need to come to our urls.py file and make a few changes here. Get rid of all these comments. We wanna add include to this thing and we wanna add a new path to the home page, and we want this to be include. And inside of here, we want this to be the blog.urls. Okay, so go ahead and save that and then close it. Now inside of, I'm gonna get rid of that. Inside of, let's close that. Inside of this the blog, right click and create a new file. And we want to file, save that as urls.py. We want to create a urls.py file for our new app, our the blog app, right? And actually we can come back here to our old urls.py file. I'm just going to copy all of this, close this, and then paste this into the new one. And we don't need this admin thing, and we don't need the include, but we are going to go from period import views. And here, Let's create a path to our home page. And this is gonna be views.home, which we haven't created yet. And the name is gonna be home. Okay, so let's go ahead and save that. Now let's go to our views.py file and let's create a view for that page we just created. So define home, we wanna pass in the request. And then we wanna return, we wanna render a request and we want to point that to home.html and we also want to pass in a context dictionary. Okay, so we can save that. Now finally we need to create this home.html file. So we come up to, let's see, the blog, right click and create a new folder. And down here we want to name this folder templates. This is where we're going to keep all of our HTML templates. So we can right click on templates and create a new file and go to file, save as and let's call this home.html. And for now, let's just h1 hello world and save this. So now if we go back to our terminal and run our server again, so python manage.py run server and then pull this up and click reload, boom, now we have hello world, the little rocket ship is gone and our app is all set up and ready to go. Okay, so we went through that very, very quickly 
And hopefully you already understand what all of that is, because I'm not going to explain any of it. If you're not quite sure what I just did in the first whole 10 minutes of this video, go back on my channel and find some of my, some of my other Django playlists. I go through it in greater detail. This is just basic Django setup for the first time uh, when you're setting up any sort of app. And I'm just going to assume you already know it. If you don't, like I said, go back and check my channel. Uh, there's all kinds of more detailed videos that explain exactly what we're doing and all those steps along the way. So, okay, we are moving right along here. And so let's head back over here and let's work on our database now. So we want to be in our the blog directory and we can come down to our models.py file. And we need to add something. We want to be able to connect to our user that we created, that super user a few minutes ago in the admin area. We want to be able to use that in our model. So we want to go from django.contrib.auth authentication dot models. We want to import user and that's just that user we created. Okay, so now we want to create a class and let's just call this post, right? We're going to create blog posts, right? So we want to pass in from model models dot model, right? And now we just want to define the things that we want in our blog. We want a title, we want the body, we want to put an author, you know, who wrote the blog post, etc. So we just need to define that right here. So let's go title, and this is going to be models.carfield. And we want the max underscore length to equal. Now notice when I hit this, this looks like a capital L. It's not, it's a lowercase l. Sublime does that for some reason, I don't know why. So be sure and make this a lowercase or else this won't work. So we want the max link to be 255. And we also want an author. So who's the author? Well, it's gonna be from models.foreign key. And the foreign key is from the user, that, that super user we created earlier. And then we wanna go on underscore delete equal models dot cascade, all capital cascade, right? And what that does is whenever if we create if we create a bunch of blog posts, right under our user, our admin user, our john elder user, and then say we create 10 blog posts, and then later on, we delete the user admin, this will delete all of admins blog posts, it will cascade and delete them all. Otherwise, we'd have a bunch of blog posts for a user that no longer exists, and that can be a hassle. So that does that. So finally, for now, at least, we just want a body, and that's going to be models dot text field. And that's all. Now, down here, we also need to define dunder dunder. Uh, that's two underscores str under under, and then self. And then we want to, that's not right. There we go. All right, so then we want to return self.title, and then let's also concatenate a little uh, little bar in the middle, and we also wanted to, we want to concatenate self.author. And what this will do is this will allow us on our admin page to see the title of the blog post and the author instead of just a string of weird numbers. Right, so go ahead and save this. Now, we also want to come over to our admin file and we need to register that new model in our admin area. So let's go from dot models, import host. That was that post class we just created. And then we want to go admin dot site dot register and then post. There we go. And this will allow our blog post entries to be accessible from the admin area, right? So we can go ahead and save this. Now, let's head back over here. And let's look at this before we migrate this. Let's look at our admin area real quick. Can we get in there without migrating? Oh, max length. I misspelled length. All right, so go back to our models.py. Yeah, so here we go, L-E-N-G-T-H, length. Okay, so save this, and let's run our server again. I don't think this is gonna work. We need to migrate it first, but, oh no, it did work. But this won't actually work yet because we need to migrate the uh, the thing. So 
You can see the blog and here's our post that shows up because uh, let's see right here, we registered it. So if we didn't do that, if I comment this out, and if I save this and come back here and hit reload, boom, that disappears. And this is just the regular user area that we've already kind of messed with, right? So if you want that to show up, you need to register it in your admin.py file. So, okay, now we need to migrate the server. We, we did this new model. We need to make a migration and push it into the database so that we can start actually doing blog stuff uh, with the database. So I'm gonna head back over here, control C to break out of here. And the command is python manage.py make migrations, plural. So we've created a migration. Now it's python manage.py migrate. Okay, now we can go python manage.py run server to run our server again. And let's head back over here and check it out. So now we can click on this and we see zero posts, but now we can add a post right here. So let's call this uh, post the first. And the author is our admin. And this is my very first blog post. <laughs> I'm very, very excited. Woohoo! <laughs> All right, so we could save this. Uh oh. Ah, so yeah, so self dot author, we need to put this in a string. And if we save that, that should work. Okay, because this is an object and we need to turn it into a string. Should have caught that. All right, so now if we hit reload, boom, so post the first, we see this little bar there. That's because here we put this little bar here, right? <laughs> Just sort of for aesthetics. And if we click on it, boom, here it is. All right, so not that exciting. So let's create another post real quick. Let's call this my second post. And it's by admin. And this is my second post. Honestly, it's really not as exciting as the first one. All right, so we can save that. All right, so now we have these two blog posts. All right, how are we doing on time? 20 minutes in. Well, let's see, we need to do quite a bit of stuff to our code here in order to now view these on the actual web page. So this one's this video is getting a little bit long. I think we'll stop it right here for now. In the next video, I'll show you how to actually show the blog posts on your web page itself instead of, you know, in this uh, admin area like this and that'll be in the next video. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. So it pages $49 to access all my courses, over 40 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 95,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com, and we'll see you in the next video.